All right, so this is clinching with Kate Allen from Philadelphia. She owns Eight Limbs Academy. And uh, here we're just starting out uh, showing what part of the leg you use when you're clinch sparring, getting used to each other. Um, the way clinch is practiced in the West and the way it's practiced in Thailand is quite different. In Thailand, we just go endless, and uh, there's not a lot of instruction. You just kind of learn to feel everything out and try different things. Uh, you can see a little bit in Kate's approach that in the West, it seems to be like there's a lot of clinch drills. Um, so she'll kind of do something and then stop like you're going to start over on the drill. So she has to get used to this kind of endless chain of clinching style in Thailand. Uh, this, <laughs> this position would be broken in a Thai fight, but uh, <laughs> I don't let go because we're training. <laughs> there's no ref. So she has this uh, kind of curved knee that I couldn't quite figure out. So sometimes I'm just standing there trying to figure it out, and then she's like, what are you doing? And so she just kind of stands there, and we're, we're just trying to figure out each other's things here. So trying different angles. Just pushing on her a little bit. Um, it took me a long time to learn in clinching how to just stand in, not hopping in and out all the time. So you'll see the difference in our approach where she kind of moves in and out and stays on the outside and I'm kind of trying to eat space most of the time. Here working on the swim a little bit. Start to bounce because she got me in a, in a pretty good position. Bouncing is a way to kind of cheat your way to a different position because it distracts the person from what they're trying to do and you can kind of change angles. Um, a lot of this like clinching endless loop in Thailand all right, so here, here we're talking about that curved knee again. She's leaning back too much. And so I'm trying to show her that you use the same distance as a jab. You can gauge your distance with the jab hand, and that's how close you want to be when you throw something. And that's how close you want to be, if not closer, when you finish it. Um, you, you don't really want to stay in the same spot after your knee, but you definitely don't want to lose ground. So I'm showing her your knee, and then you come in. You eat that space instead of falling back. Yeah. So now here she's standing in closer. She's able to do turns off of that because she's got better um, leverage. Here I'm jerking on her a little bit, trying to distract her leg. It's good. She's trying different angles, trying to go low. So you basically are just trying to stand your ground and find openings. So if someone has a really good guard and it's hard for you to get in, because I'm always sticking my hands in her face and so she kind of doesn't know how to enter, she's not used to this kind of clinching. What you can do is distract them with body punches or anything to kind of find your way in. So I'm showing her if you have a really good guard, hit them first before coming in. Uh, Krudam at Sitmon Chai reminded me of this when we did a private. Nina's all excited. <laughs> She's like, wait, show that again. And I was like, it's so obvious. Just hit the body first. So I'm showing her ways to distract someone before coming in. It's a, it's a way to come in when someone has a really good guard. Yanking on her being a jerk. So she likes to put her hips back which is very, very common. So I'm showing her, you bring your hips in. The moment someone grabs you, you want your hips to be in so they can't yank you down. So I can just walk her around. You put your hips in, bring your head up, and just move forward. See, if I put my butt back like this, I'm open to knees, you can yank me down, you can do whatever. So you want to put your hips in and pull your head back the moment you feel someone grab the back of your head. See, now her hips are in more and she's getting better control. And then she's distracted by that arm not being able to come in, and I'm able to turn her. So by doing this continuous loop kind of clinching, you learn to feel different things, and you can kind of transition between 
one thing not working to the next. <laughs> you can't break people's backs, but you can uh, take the wind out of them by squeezing them really tightly. But. Yeah, so when, when you're used to this endless loop thing, when someone is concentrating on one aspect, like that arm, you can do something else really quickly. You can just transition between moves. And Kate isn't used to this kind of clinching yet, so she's not uh, she's not used to it yet. But she starts picking it up as we go. I'm showing her here, when you feel thigh against thigh, you can use that. So you, you kind of trip with the thigh and pull up near the neck. It's like an Elvis hip. You don't want a knee, but you kind of pop your hip over. And then you want to pull up at the neck at the same time. So I pull the neck first so that she's not thinking about her leg. And then you do the knee. Me being a jerk. <laughs> Alright, so here I start bringing my knee up in defense. Um, so this is basically like a block, so they can't really get in. And she's trying to sweep me off of it, but it's actually pretty hard to do. So it's, it's a pretty good defense to leave that leg up. I'm showing her that you can actually just push the leg itself rather than trying to kick out the standing leg. So you sweep it kind of like a teat. And then if you don't want to bring your arm down, if you're afraid of elbows, you can sweep with your leg instead. That. And even if you don't sweep them, you can knee them in the thigh. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna hurt. Nice. So there's my hopping again. It's my cheat to get to different moves. Change momentum. So I can just keep moving in case trying to like catch up because she's not used to it. Here she's eating space, it's really good. It, it forces me to back up a little bit. There, me and then grab, it's great. Nice. nice turn. There, she's gonna try on the leg. Nice. <laughs> so, I, I tell people, don't grab like a slow dance. It's like a, a middle school middle school dance when they grab around the neck like that, you can't muscle it. What you do is you put your elbow on someone's collarbone and then you want your hands up by where a girl's ponytail would be in a high ponytail. And then you get much more leverage. So see how she can yank on me there whereas you would just be pulling and pulling on the neck and making yourself tired and you can't get anywhere. No middle school dancing. So here we're adding like some, some teeps and kicks, you just want to try different ranges in getting into the clinch, because when you clinch in a real fight, you don't like decide you're going to clinch and each try to grab the neck, it's, it's transitional between your strikes. So here she's got a really good position, um, she calls it position one, and in the west I've heard it called the double plumb, but it's basically like this double grip behind the neck. And because I put my hips in and put my head up, she can't yank me down, so she's asking, what do you do? Saying you can knee the thighs, if their hips are in, you can step behind them and kind of knock them down like that. Or you can just transition down to the body, because they have a sway back at that point anyway. So if you can grab their body when their hips are already in, you can get yourself in a very good position that way. I'm not great at having my teeth caught. <laughs> you can see I don't really know what to do. When she does that, something I need to work on. That's a good response when her leg is caught, she goes real wide. So here again, distracted by the arm, and then I can turn her. Good response there though, when she gets her feet back. See, that's good the way she's gauging with her, with her hands all the time, just staying close. My arm shouldn't be down like that. It's dangerous for me. <laughs> I do that in fights. Um, I over-rotate on the left and then I keep my right arm down. It's something I need to work on a lot. They're using the blocks.
good. So she kind of makes me step back a little bit. Okay, so here I'm face smushing. That's what I call it. It's just when you put the glove right in someone's face and push. Um, it's a good move for any time you're kind of caught. You can push someone off of you that way. Here controlling inside her arm. And then she kind of gets me in a good position, so I start the bounce to try to find a new position. And I'm able to do that because she's distracted by the bounce. <laughs> there she's saying she needs the bounce. Alright, so here I'm trying to talk to her about how in the West it seems like everyone just tries to grab the neck, that this is kind of the main point of clinch. In Thailand, you don't see it as much, um, unless there's a big disparity between the skills of the two fighters. There's a lot of arm control in Thailand, so your uh, your gloves are like hooks. So you want to get like the palm of your hand on the inside of the elbows, and you can steal steer people that way. Um, so you don't want to be too wide. I'm showing her to put your elbows inside, so that when someone tries to swim in, you can guard with your elbow. If someone tries to grab you down low, you just kind of catch them on the inside of the elbows as they come. She does that really good right there. You grab them there and then you can do a long knee or you can just start steering them and turn them. Knees going. Good. So I have my arm on the outside of her elbow there. If I had my arm on the inside, I could control her better. But I'm actually in, in not a great position there because my arm is outside. So here I'm overturning. I'm grabbing too far around her neck. But the minute I bring my elbow back onto her shoulder, I have better control. So if you overreach, just quickly pull your arm back so that your elbow is on the person's collarbone. See, now I can't grab her on that side. And she can control me just with one arm. And then you can also block, see how she grabbed my head, but I'm using my shoulder to kind of block her leverage. And then my elbow is on the inside so she can't swim in. She got there anyway. <laughs> so when someone pushes your face, don't just leave your face there. Move your face and you can get away from that. Um, I had to have a trainer actually tell me, so they don't just leave your face there. <laughs> I didn't figure that one out on my own. So working for inside position there. Good, she's using her head to close that so I can't really push off of her. So here she's just trying to muscle my head down with a single movement, and if someone's really strong, if they have a good neck and a good base, you can't really pull them down. But if you turn it into two small jerks, like that, it doesn't matter how strong someone is. When you do two, it's really hard to resist the second one. You can see how easily she pulls me down there. And I was trying. So here just guarding with one hand and using the other one kind of long as offense. My elbow's too far over. There, I get it in her shoulder. Nice. So she has a good grip on me, but because I'm moving so much she can't set herself up. If she was bouncing she could distract me. There. She feels my thigh, or I tell her to feel my thigh, and you can turn someone backwards as well. So I have this tendency to overreach with my left, and it turns me kind of sideways. And if you step behind my left leg, you can totally knock me backwards. Um, nobody's done it so far, lucky me, but it's definitely a hole that I need to close up. There, blocking with the elbow. Nice turn, Kate.
so she likes to, to grab to do that knee and then she just lets go. Try to try to always keep grabbing for people. Don't just let people go for free. It's habitual, it's just from training, so you can train it out. Here she's trying different things to get in, that's good. Keeping. Nice, throwing knees as I change position. This hop in works really well as well. Close distance with your leg up. Face smush. So I start catching her knees here, but I'm not really doing anything off of it. Um, you don't want to catch someone and not punish them for it. It doesn't look good. So if you catch something, I can knee with my right there. There I tried to sweep her and couldn't quite get it. So there are a couple of things you can do after catching the knee, but you need to do something. Don't just catch it. Good. See, she's starting to get used to this continuous thing. She doesn't stop and wait for the next move. It's backwards turn. Uh, she creates the next move. You start to feel this one. So here I'm just telling her that you start to feel, like when you feel someone's thigh on your thigh, you know what that move is. Or when you start to feel that someone is overturned, you know how to step back. But as a basic thing, you want your stance to be wider than your opponent, and you want to push your shoulders in like a swimming motion to get lots of rotation on them, because it gives you more length. So people tend to kind of square up when they're clinching, and you lose a lot of length for your leverage. And for someone who's short like me, I need those extra inches. But for someone like Kate, who's tall, she can really shove someone backwards by getting an extra, like, six inches just by rotating your shoulder. And then when you, when you swim like that, you can also protect from people grabbing. So if someone's trying to get your neck, you just pinch your shoulder up and rotate. Master K called it no neck. But even if they've already gotten a grip on you, if you pinch and rotate, you can pop them off. See, I step back. Don't do that, because you're losing ground. She does it better than I do. She steps in when she does that turn. That's what you want to do. Good. Okay, so she she blocked me getting her neck by having her arm up. Now she just needs to pull her forearm to where the inside of my elbow is, and then she can push me off. So if she keeps her forearm up by my shoulder, she can't get me off of her because there's no leverage. So here my arm is up too high. I just need to pull it back to her elbow and then pop her off. So if you have a good guard and people can't get to your neck, you need to then have the next thing, which is to get that arm off of you. So pull it in, pop it off. You always, always want to be at people's uh, joints. So it's, it's like jujitsu in that way, in that you know where the weak points are. There, she could step behind me, but I step behind her instead. Just a distraction point. So you can block with this leg up as well. So Pinu is really big on this one. Um, you block people's knees with your knee up, and it's actually pretty painful to get kneed on the inside of your thigh while you're trying to knee somebody. Um, it's like a double, double impact collision. It's so good. I don't know why I don't do it more in fights, um, but it's really, really a good technique. There, good. She changes levels. So just keep changing positions, move to the next thing. <laughs> I take her back, which in Thailand is a really big point. Uh, when I watch Max Muay Thai, clearly Westerners don't think this is that big a deal, but taking someone's back is a pretty huge point in Thailand because uh, they can't defend themselves. Turning your back on someone is a huge deal here. <laughs> All right, so here's clinching with Nina, and I'm showing her that when you lock someone's arm, 
you can come up over the back. So you just swim your arm up from the back. So they're telling me that they learned from somebody that you just pull your arm out. Or I guess when you lock the arm, you just yank it down. Yeah, so you try to yank the person down and knee. I don't know this one. Um, trying to pull your arm straight out is difficult with gloves. You can totally get stuck. So I'm showing that you just pull your hand into where your belly's at, just rotate in, and come up. So she gets caught there. Yeah. So you can you can bring your arm in and like uppercut the person like that. You don't have to do that. That's a nice way to add a little nasty something on top of it. But if your arm gets caught, you just rotate your elbow against your own body. All right. There, she's good.